Hello Hair Tools users! Welcome to episode 1 of the Blender Hair Tools for Beginners tutorial series. This video is going to be for anyone just starting out with the hair tool add-on. However, I'll be assuming you have at least moderate Blender knowledge. If you're a newcomer to Blender, please watch specific tutorials on Blender before watching this one. I'll be going over the following in this video. The hair tool user interface, working with grids, curves from grid surface, strand properties, and manually adjusting the strands. Okay, let's get started. Open Blender and clear out a scene. Import your head or character into Blender. All right, let's move over to the hair tool pane over on the right toolbar. Pressing N on the keyboard will show and hide this window. Okay, first let's minimize all these panes so we can go through them one by one. The first one on the list is the draw hair pane. I'll be going over this in another episode, so let's keep that minimized for now. Next is the hair bake pane. Again, let's keep this hidden for now as I'll be going over this in another episode as well. And now we have the hair operators pane. Right now, we only see curves from grid surface because we don't have any grids or curves to edit. That will change very soon. Next is the library. Here, you will find preloaded hair that you can use as a starting point. So if you just go ahead and click here, and then find the hairstyle that best fits what you're trying to achieve and click on it. Then click on Append. The grid with curves will now show up on your 3D viewport. Depending on the size of your head or character, it may come over much bigger than this. I personally recommend scaling down the character to fit the grid. If you're following along, please do this. Otherwise, some of the settings I use may be different from you if you scale the grid up bigger than this. Now, we can delete the curves since we will only be using the grids. Select your grid. If you have more than one, you have to do this one at a time. And let's set the origin to geometry so we can scale them correctly. All right, now you have a grid. Let's talk about the grid a little bit in case you're not sure what it is and what it's for and how to use it. The grid will generate the curves that will end up being our hair cards. I like to think of it like this. The edges on the grid are where the curves will generate. You can use this to help with the flow of the hair. In order for a grid to work, it needs to be all quads. So when you UV the mesh, it will end up looking like this. Now, think of where your roots will be. These edges need to be sharp. Hopefully that helped you better understand the grid. Now let's go take a look at it and I'll show you a few things. I took the grid and removed any subdivisions so we can get a better look at it. I also removed any sharp edges so I can go ahead and show you exactly where we would need to mark sharp. If you zoom in on where the roots would be, we would need to select an edge, then go to Select Edge Loops. Now, go to Edge, Mark Sharp. Once you have your curves generated, they get the default strand settings. Let's take a look at the different parameters. Generation methods. You have two options, edge centers or vertex positions. Strand count. This is pretty straightforward. How many cards do you want? Points per strand. This basically adds subdivisions to the hair. The higher the number, the more subdivisions. The lower the number, the less. Offset. You can move the points either closer to the root or closer to the tip. Clumps. This is normally used when making eyelashes. It clumps the hair together and you can change the seed for the different results. Clump fall off. This brings the clumps either closer to the root or the tip. Clump influence. This will be the strength of the clump. Randomize spacing. This will create some random space in between the hair cards. Randomize length. This adds some randomness to the length of each strand. Now we're going to jump over to the noise settings. Noise amplitude. This is the strength of the noise. You can play with the seed to get different results. Length constraint. This constrains the noise movement to the grid surface. Noise frequency. This gives more detail to the hair flow. Higher the frequency produces smaller detail on hair strands. Once you enable noise amplitude, then we also get per strand noise. This will help break up the uniform look of the main noise. 
frequency. Higher frequency produces smaller detail on hair strands. Now if we jump back up to contrast, this is the contrast between the areas with no noise to full noise influence over strand length. Contrast offset. This will offset the noise influence either more towards the root or the tip of the strand. Snap amount. This will snap the strand to the grid. Offset above. This will move the strands above the grid surface. This is handy for creating additional layers where you would need to have them above the previous layer. Generate ribbons. If you are making hair cards, you want to set this as true. This will add a curved profile to the generated strands. Strand width. This is the width of the hair strand. Align tilt. This will align the hair strand to the grid. I always set this as true. This option can be reset later as well under Curve Operations in the Hair Tool pane. Now that you understand all the strand settings, let's add some hair to our actual head model. I just remembered that we deleted the subdivisions. Let's go ahead and re-add the subdivisions so that we can get a better fit. I'm going to go ahead and change the grid just a little bit. I would like it to be a little shorter. To do that, I'm going to select all the edges at the bottom and then move it up a little. Now I'm going to make some adjustments, just by moving around the vertices with proportional editing turned on. Just move the vertices closer to the head until you get the result you're looking for. Make sure the grid does not intersect into the head mesh. Basically, we want the grid to be in the overall shape of how we would like our hair to end up looking in the end. Alright, go into object mode, click on your grid, generate some curves and play around with the strand settings. Once you're satisfied with your curves, we can manually adjust them by going into edit mode. Hiding one side of the hair curves so we don't accidentally move them is always a good idea. Now we can move the curves around until we get them where we would like them. You can also use the hair modeling tool, but I'll be going over that in another episode. Moving the curves is very easy. Make sure you go back and forth between connected and not connected in the proportional editing settings. Connected only will only move that one hair strand. When it's turned off, curves near the one you're moving will follow. Now we have some hair cards. Now I want to go over a few more settings under Curve Operations. First, let's hide the grid. Now, go to the Hair Tool pane and look under Curve Operations. There's a few different settings here. First, we have Taper Curve. This will taper the ends of the hair, like this. We also have hair straighten. This will straighten the strands. You can control influence over strand length with transition offset and contrast perimeters. We can smooth the curve. This smooths strand points, which helps reduce noise. Smooth tilt. 
This will smooth the tilt based on the align curves to grid. Smooth radius. This adds a smoothing effect to all hair strands. Randomized curve tilt. This changes the curve tilt over the length of the hair. Adjust length. This can make the hair either shorter or longer. Resample. Allows to increase or decrease the number of points each curve is made of. You can choose to have uniform spacing, equal point count, and only select it if you want to adjust only specific strands. You can also move the points closer to the root or the tip and adjust length here as well. Simplify curves. This is similar to resample. It also lets you reduce the poly count by reducing the points. You can choose only selected if you want to have this apply to only specific strands. Tips and tricks that I've learned while making this tutorial. When adding extra layers of hair, we need to move the layer above the last layer to avoid intersection. I figured out an easy way of doing this using the hair straighten operation. I'm gonna quickly add another layer. Make sure you uninstance the profile first and then watch. That did a really good job at moving the layer above the last layer, and I only need to do a little bit of editing. I think I like the results of this better than using the offset above under the adjust curve profile or the curves from grid surface option. Another quick tip that I brought up before, when adding more layers, you must uninstance the profile on the new layer, otherwise it will share the same profile as the previous layer, and if you change settings on this layer, the first layer will change as well. As you can see, when I uninstance and adjust the strands width on this new layer, the bottom layer does not change. And that's what I'm going for. Well, there you have it. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial and have a good start at making some hair now. Stay tuned for my next episode, Interactive Hair Grooming. See you next time. And as always, please feel free to leave a comment with ideas for beginner episodes you'd like to see. Bye for now.